just with kind of on aging, like measuring aging. So uh, Dr. Horvath came out with his epigenetic clock, 2013. Everything seems to be 2013. Yep. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you use epigenetic clocks in your kind of to measure age? And if I can reverse my epigenetic clock, right, I move it back. Mm -hmm. would, would you view that that actually makes me younger or is it just that I've changed something in the clock? All right. So, um, no, we don't use epigenetic biological age measurements of any type um, in our work because we don't need to. Our work involves repairing damage. And that generally, because it's a divide and conquer approach, we have different projects for different types of damage. We would not expect to see changes to uh, biomarkers of aging of any kind resulting from this work, especially since we actually don't even do clinical trials. We do early stage work in the lab in the laboratory. Um, however, to answer the other half of your question, this is a big, 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 big question across the point of developing these epigenetic clocks, or indeed other clocks that are coming out now that are based on proteomics or metabolomics or even combinations of all of these. The whole point is to be able to speed up the process of testing drugs so that you can, or new medicine, so that you can tell that I without waiting for those health problems of late life to occur or not occur as the case may be. Instead, you can see that some kind of precursor change. But then of course, the question that you ask comes up very, very strongly. If we do something that reverses the epigenetic clock, are we actually going to be sure that it will also postpone the health problems of late life? And we can't, we absolutely can't because this, these clocks are developed statistically. We look at uh, you know, blood samples or whatever from people of a variety of ages, and we check out their epigenome. We find out you know, where the um, methylation uh, marks are, and we identify particular methylation marks that seem to change at a nice linear rate during aging, and we use that as a clock. But we don't know, because we don't know the causality. We certainly don't have any reason to believe that the changes to these methylation marks actually actually result in changes of gene expression that determine the way that the body is behaving or how much aging has happened. We don't, we don't even necessarily know that those things are um, linked. We certainly don't know whether they're linked to drugs. So for example, one could in principle have a drug that uncoupled a clock from the body by explicitly reversing the epigenetic age, but then not have any, having any effect on physiological consequences. Um, and so the goal is to find clocks, and of course everybody, everybody who's working on clocks like Steve Horvath knows all of this. So mm -hmm. the goal is to find clocks that do mirror the uh, time until one's going to become sick in the context of a wide variety of different interventions. Um, in other words, interventions that work actually do also change the clock and interventions that don't work don't change the clock. Um, and in order to get to the clock, we have to study a lot of data from a lot of people uh, who have had a lot of different circumstances and see how their, um, their clocks change. And um, that simply takes time. So what's happening right now, what's been happening ever since 2013 or so, is that clocks have been getting progressively better. Um, uh, progressively more sophisticated, more uh, robust, more uh, resilient to the kind of uncoupling I just mentioned. Right. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.